Hello everybody, uh, today I'm here to talk about how I designed some sequential logic circuits um, inside of Geometry Dash, um, which is quite a fun game. So I'm going to start off by uh, playing it through once just so you can kind of see what it looks like, uh, and then I'll go into the editor and show you how I set up some of the gates, um, and then run through a few examples and show you that it evaluates uh, indeed to the correct logical uh, output. Alright, so as you kind of kind of saw there, uh, basically as you hop through the level, uh, you get a bunch of options whether or not to uh, select between a logical 1 or a logical 0. Uh, and then kind of periodically throughout uh, the level, you get to see uh, what kind of operation is being evaluated, uh, kind of displayed in text in the middle. Um, and then the really cool thing about this, uh, this level is that your state at the end of the level uh, determines what the results of the operations are. Um, so if you're up top, it's a logical one, and if you're at the bottom, it's a zero. Uh, right here, kind of at the middle, uh, you can see the entire uh, operation that's performed. Um, so it's D or A naught or B naught or C naught, and that entire thing is XOR with E right there. Uh, as you go through here, you'll kind of see that uh, occasionally, there's a few spots where uh, options are not provided. So, like here, uh, D is a don't care, uh, and C over here is a don't care. Um, for those kinds of things, uh, basically, you can look at the um, the design and see that if you are at this bottom state at this current state, that means you've gotten at least one zero previously, uh, and it doesn't matter what C is, um, you'll continue to evaluate to a zero and stay at the bottom of here. Um, in addition, uh, this not operation uh, that kind of is performed in the middle happens unconditionally, uh, and it basically just flips uh, the entire bit state. Um, so if you're at the bottom, you'll go up to the top. If you're at the top, you'll go down to the bottom. Um, so I'm going to put in a, uh, a quick little sequence, and then I'll kind of run through it real quick to evaluate it uh, and kind of show you how that works. So. Oh, well, I died there. That was that was not very good. Um, let me let me try that again real quick. It is it is still a video game, so. All right. Uh, so, uh, one of the other cool cool things about this game is that you can see the little trail that your player took uh, in green here. Um, so we can actually trace back the inputs that I took in order to get to this zero output here at the end. So looking at the start, um, I took a uh, 1 uh, here for A and a 0 here for B. Together those and together uh, give you a 0, so that's kind of at the bottom down here. Then uh, since you already are at the zero state and adding another 0 to this AND operation will not get you a 1, uh, we don't care what C is, um, the player state doesn't change at this, this evaluation. Then the entire thing is uh, inverted, so you will head up to the top. Um, kind of in the middle here, I showed that happening, but I also showed De Morgan's uh, being applied, so you uh, break the, the bar that's applied to this entire set of ands. Um, each term becomes uh, inverted, and then they're all in, uh, ordered together. Then we get to this D. Uh, in this case, this D operation also does not matter. Um, in the case of uh, a one state, which is what you're in uh, when you're currently up top. Um, anything that a one is ordered with will result in a one, so we don't really care uh, what D is at this time, uh, because we know that the previous um, evaluation here is a one. Uh, down here we would evaluate it and check to see uh, if we were at a zero and we got a one, we would want to go up to a one state. Uh, moving along to the last operation, this is the XOR. Um, if we're in a 1 state and we receive a 1, we want to head down to the bottom, which is a 0 state. Uh, and if we're at the uh, bottom, we want to head up to the top if we receive a 1. So when one of the two is true, um, basically you'll end up heading to uh, the top uh, if 
in the case of our, our example here, we were in a one state, we got a one, one XOR with one, we'll give you zero, so we headed back down to the bottom. Uh, and then the entire operation together, um, you'll see that the resulting output was indeed a zero. So uh, I want to run through one more quick example, uh, just kind of trace through it again, and then I'll break down a few of the little tricks that I did in order to set up all of these logic gates uh, and then kind of talk about some more little final thoughts. Uh, so that time, I believe I inputted a 1 for every single operation. So here you can see I have a 1 for A, 1 for B, 1 for C, um, a 1 for D, a 1 for E. Um, so I skipped over all of the don't cares. Um, and let's hop right over to the last uh, expression. Put in the 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, all, the, all the, the ones that we got, um, and just kind of check those out and see what the output is. So if we... Uh, Look at this section here, uh, A, when it is a 1, will go to 0. When B is a 1, it will go to 0. When C is a 1, it will go to 0. So those are all zeros. Uh, D is a 1. Um, so this entire block here will go to 1 because it's all ordered together. Then you have uh, an XOR operation. So you have a 1 here for this entire section and a 1 over here. When those two are XOR together, you'll get a 0. Uh, and as you can see, the player came down to the bottom and resulted in a 0. This is indeed working, it's very cool. Uh, you can play it for yourself once I publish the, uh, the level um, and you'll be able to check it out, uh, input your own combinations and see how it evaluates it. So I also want to talk about real quick how this all works. Uh, basically it uses a, uh, you can see them kind of scattered around, um, a bunch of toggle triggers and count triggers. For the first uh, evaluated evaluation, we have an A and a B. Um, if I go in here and I edit this uh, toggle trigger, you can see that right now group one is set to off. If I go in here and inspect this piece, uh, you can see this portal has a uh, uh, group one target applied to it. Um, and then underneath, underneath these letters, oh, I'll have to reset it, uh, there are these coins. The coins have a pickup item toggle uh, ID of one on them. Um, and then I have this count trigger over here. When item ID 1 is picked up twice, uh, I activate group ID 1. So essentially what all that means is that when I pick up both coins, the portal spawns. Uh, if I pick up one coin, the portal doesn't spawn. If I pick up uh, this, the second coin, the portal also doesn't spawn. Uh, yeah, uh, and that makes sense for an AND operation. So if uh, one is selected for both of these bits, we want the portal to spawn in and to move up to a logical one. Uh, and if we have any one that is a zero, we don't want the portal to appear. Um, we want to stay down in this zero state. Uh, so, yeah, basically that's repeated throughout the rest of this. Um, just kind of checking different sections, uh, seeing what works. Um, what would get you to the next possible state. Um, and then based on what your previous state is, you can kind of go through and evaluate and check uh, certain things uh, to figure out uh, what game elements should appear or not appear. So uh, I'm gonna go through and play it one more time and then kind of make one more general comment about kind of this whole uh, experiment. So, uh, as you can see, um, level is now verified, so I'll be uploading that. Uh, but also, uh, we have a time that you can see. Uh, the time fluctuates between 17 and 16 seconds, um, depending on whether you've loaded the level already. So if I replay the level here, um, in a second you'll see it goes to 16 seconds. Um, when you calculate the, the, the frequency of this, um, the circuit design, kind of taking into account uh, how much delay it takes from input to an output, 
Um, this little section could run at um, 58 uh, millihertz, uh, which you do by taking the uh, time and taking the reciprocal of it to get a frequency. So uh, that's all I kind of wanted to talk about um, with this sequential logic project. This was kind of fun to put together, um, and I hope you enjoyed checking it out. Um, yeah.